Hi, my name's Chris Tidmarsh and you join me here today at West Coast Dealing School in Las Vegas. With this video, we're going to take a look at the procedures involved when colouring up and replacing the small denomination chips used in a tournament with larger denomination chips. This whole process is known as the chip race and colour up. First let me explain why this procedure is necessary. During poker tournaments, the minimum bets are governed either by the size of the blind levels or the size of the betting levels, depending on the type of poker game we are playing. We will discuss more about the function of blinds and betting levels in a different video, but suffice it to say for the purpose of this video, all you need to be aware of is that as time moves forward in the tournament, the minimum betting increments increase. This eventually leads to it being necessary to introduce larger denomination chips to the game and remove what is currently the smallest denomination chip as it will be no longer useful as a betting tool and so becomes redundant in the game. This process has a number of components which begins once the betting levels arrived at the point where we do not need the smallest chip in the game anymore. So let's assume we are using chip values of 25, 100, 500 and 1000. The betting levels have been increasing every 30 minutes and we have reached the point that when the next level arrives we will no longer need the 25 value chip. Before we move on, let me just explain some of the terminology I am going to use in the next section, so even the most novice of you can follow along. An ante is a bet placed in the pot by all players in the game. It is usually the smallest value bet for the current round being played. A blind is a bet made before the players see any of their cards, and it is a part of the game to induce and encourage action in the game. Action being the competition between players by way of betting against each other. There are usually two blinds in the game that require blinds, the small blind and the big blind. These are posted by the two players after or to the left of the dealer button. More on the dealer button in another video. The betting limits or stakes are the amounts the players can bet in certain games. Some games restrict how much a player can bet at any one time, known as fixed limit or structured games. Other games have no restriction on what a player can bet. However, we need the limit or stakes number to control the betting activity in a restricted game, but this increases over time based on the current round or level. The round or level is a period of time. As time moves forward, the antes, blinds and levels also increase. OK, so now you are equipped with the basic information of what is going on with the chips, bet sizes and levels. As I mentioned before, there comes a point in the tournament when we need to remove the small chips and replace them with larger chips. When this happens depends on how long each level is and so how frequently we have the blinds and levels set to increase. But this process will happen multiple times throughout a tournament. For our exercise, we are going to focus on removing the 25 value chip and introducing the next value chip to the table, the 5000 chip. Let's suppose we are coming to the end of level 4 of our tournament and the blinds are at 200-400 and at the next level we are going to a 100 ante with blind levels at 300-600. We are approaching an official break for the players and we will assume our players break will be 20 minutes in duration. Toward the end of the current level, your floor supervisor will visit your table and deliver to you the replacement 5000 value chips that will be needed to exchange for the green chips, and also you will be given chip trays to house those green chips. The supervisor will reach into your tray, or well as it is known, and set the chips down and make a comment similar to this. Have one player buy up all of the green chips please. And these 5,000 chips are for the colour up, do not remove them from the well. He will then move on to the next table. And your responsibility as a dealer is to now determine which player you will ask to buy the green chips from all of the other players. Your first consideration should be to look for a player who currently has most of the green chips. However, 
that player must also have a fairly large stack of bigger chips too. It would be no use having a player start buying all of the green chips from the other players if he doesn't have enough larger denomination chips to pay for all of the green chips at the table. Also, you don't want to leave a player short on other denomination chips such that he cannot make bets on his hands effectively. So you should consider a player who has a big stack of other chips too. Now, remember, a player is not obliged to buy the other chips from other players. This is quite a distracting process and some players prefer to focus on their game and would rather not get involved. So do not insist that a player help you with this if they do not wish to do so. Usually there will be two or three good options at the table and there seems to always be one player willing to help. Let's call this person the table captain, just for ease of description as we move forward with this video. So the players closest to the table captain will generally take care of their transactions with that player directly. All other players who are not physically close to the table captain will make their transactions through the dealer. Remember, you do not want to hold up the game as you take care of this process, so be sure you are only interacting as the mediator between players when there is a lull in the action. Hand by hand, you should be looking to collect any green chips that have been put into the pot and exchanging them with the table captain for larger denomination chips. When there is a break in play, maybe a player is thinking about his hand, then you should be looking for players with green chips and exchanging them with replacement chips from the table captain. This is the procedure you should use when collecting and selling chips. Stack the green chips in stacks of four in front of the player who is selling them. Leave any odd chips behind and announce the total value in multiples of 100. Then take that stack of chips to the table captain and stack them in front of that player and announce the number one more time. You are now expecting the table captain to give you chips of equal value to deliver back to the player who you collected the green chips from. As you drop off the chips to that player, spread them in front of the player and announce the amount. Let's just show an example of that at the table. Here we take 12 green chips from the player, stack them in front of the player and announce the amount, 300, and then deliver them to the table captain and stack them once more and ask for the value to replace them, 300 please. The player will give you 3 black chips and you can deliver those to the seller and declare 300. Let's suppose the player gave you 400 in green chips. If the player selling has black chips available, don't be afraid to ask for one 100 chip too to make the transaction easier for the table captain. He can then just give you a 500 chip as a replacement. Now, as you take care of this process, be careful not to start these transactions too early. If there is still 15 minutes to go before the players break, you might want to hold back on replacing everybody's green chips or you will create a situation where you will be continually making change for everyone as they post their anti-bets. Now using 100 value chips because they sold all their green chips to the table captain. So timing is a consideration here, as two is not immediately buying all of the green chips from each player. Leave each player a few that they can use leading up to the player's break. Ultimately, by the time the player's break arrives, you would have all the green chips sold to the table captain. Apart from any odd number chips the player still has. Remember, each player should have no more than three green chips in front of them. As we complete the last hand or two leading up to the break, be sure to tell the players they need to leave their green chips in front of their chip stacks and visible before they leave and take their break. You do not want to have to go fishing for the chips in their chip stacks. So let's now assume we reach the player's break. It's time to complete the chip race and finally colour up those green chips. Remember, all players are permitted to witness the chip race portion of this process, so do not tell the players they must leave the area, like you might advise them to do on any other break. 
This is the player's money, so they are entitled to bear witness to the process until we have determined who will be awarded 100 value chips as replacements for the remaining 25 value chips. Just before we begin the next part of the process, you should check around the table now for any further green chips. If a player still has a stack of green chips in front of him, go ahead and make the transaction with the chips from the table captain's chip stack. For this exercise, let's assume all players left the table and they have left you to take care of what remains of this process. If you still need to exchange chips between player and the table captain, be sure to follow this procedure. Gather the green chips and stack them in front of the player who they belong to. Break them down into stacks of four, 100 in value, and spread any odd green chips in front on the play line ready for the chip race. Be sure to double check for dirty stacks and remaining green chips. But if you do find any, be sure not to disturb a player's chip stack. If we need to pull a chip from a dirty stack, then simply lift the chip from the stack to clear the odd green chip, remove that chip and replace the chip stack back exactly the way you found it. Do not go cleaning up players' chips and stacks for them. They must be left in a state as close to the way you found them. For example, if a player has created a design with chips, as some players do, and I see a green chip among the stack, I will remove what I need to in order to retrieve the chip and put the other chips back in place. Poker can be an emotional game for some, and interfering with their environment might affect their emotional state and so affect the way they play. Some players will look to blame anyone or anything for their losses, so you do not want to give them reason to blame you. OK, so we have the green chips stacked in front of the player ready for the transaction. Leave these chips here and collect the replacement chips from the table captain first. If you take the green chips from the player to the table captain, it is possible when you collect the replacement chips, you might forget where they should be returned to. Collecting the replacements first and delivering them to the player is by far the most effective way of making this transaction because this way you know where the replacement chips are to be returned to and you can't forget where the green chips are going to as it's now the player with all of the green chips. Once it seems all players have only odd green chips remaining, you should systematically check one more time each stack for any hidden green chip. Then place and spread all remaining chips for each player in front of them in clear view. The final step is to now check the green chip racks of the table captain. Make sure they are complete, clean with no other chip values mixed in with the green chips and place any odd chips he may have in front of him ready for the chip race. And so onto the chip race itself. Once we have all odd green chips in front of the players, we can now start the chip race. The chip race is basically how we determine who will receive a replacement 100 value chip in place of the 25 value chips they currently possess. We are not simply going to give everyone who has green chips a replacement black chip, although some smaller rooms do adopt this procedure. We are going to deal cards to the players to determine who wins a replacement chip. And this is why it is called the chip race. At this point, you should prepare your cards. Use the deck of cards you were using to deal the last hand before the break and riffle the cards one time only and cut onto a cut card. Starting to the left of the actual dealer, we are going to deal one card face up for each green chip they possess. Place the card in front of their chip stack, one on top of the other, leaving three corners of each card showing. Moving clockwise around the table until all players have received their cards. At the end of the process, spread your stub to the right of the well as if you had completed a poker hand. Then gather the green chips from the players and set them down in the middle of the table in stacks of four. If you have any odd chips, so less than four, Here's what you should do. If we have three, 
we will round this up and assume it as 100 in value. If we have 2, we will also round this up and assume it to be worth 100. If we have 1, we round this down and treat it as if it does not exist. So here in our case, we have 14 chips, which is 350 in value. Therefore, we will exchange these for 4 times 100 chips from the table captain. So go ahead and pull out 4 black chips from the table captain's stack and spread them in front of his position for verification. Then bring them to the centre of the table and spread them again. Collect the green chips and deliver those to the table captain and set them in the chip trays with the rest of the green chips. Now we need to give the 100 value chips to the winning players. Remember, each player may only receive one chip each. So even if a player had three aces in front of them, they will only receive one chip. So starting with who has the highest card by rank and suit, we will deliver a chip to that player. Place the chip clearly in front of his chip stack behind the playing line so it is clear the player did win a chip during the chip race. In fact, whenever you make a transaction with a player who is not at their seat, be sure to leave the chips visible just like this. Once you have delivered the chip to the player, go ahead and turn over all of the cards in front of him. But do not muck this hand. Please leave it in place until all chips have been paid. If we make a mistake and pay off the wrong player, we can recover and turn the cards back over to verify. But if you go and muck their cards and make a payout mistake, we will have no way of recalling who had which cards. This could be catastrophic for a player who is extremely short on chips. Speaking of a player short on chips, remember that a player cannot bust out of a tournament during the chip race. If you are at a table where a player has only three green chips or less to his total stack, and you are at the chip race, be sure to call your floor supervisor so they can advise you how to take care of this situation. There are a number of ways of handling this, so I will not discuss them here, but suffice it to say that the player will receive a black chip no matter what. It is up to your event coordinator to determine how they would like to handle this situation. OK, so we have issued all of the replacement chips, and now we are waiting for the supervisor to come and take care of the colour-up procedure. As you wait for your supervisor, be sure to gather up all of the cards and set up both decks of cards and clean up your area. Seats should be placed back into correct positions and clean up any trash on the floor, etc. However, do not leave your table to head to the trash bins or for any other reason. Even if your poker room locks down the doors during breaks and players are no longer in the room, if you need to step away from your table for any reason, you must ask either a dealer at the next table to watch your table for you whilst you are not there, or ask a floor supervisor to be at your table should you need to be away from it for a longer period of time. A bathroom break, for example. So as you continue to set up the cards, the floor supervisor arrives to take care of the colour up. Please stop what you are doing now and focus on the supervisor. They will ask you if you have completed the chip race. You will reply appropriately. They will then ask you to count along with them the green chips in the chip trays. And it will be done quickly, so be sure you know how much a stack of 20 green chips is worth. 500 in this case, as the supervisor will basically do something like this. So count with me, 5, 10, 15, 20, 2500, 3000, 3500, 36, 37, 3800, 3900, 4000 and one yellow chip, 5000, correct? You will say you agree if it is correct. He will ask you for one 5000 chip and you will place it on the felt near him and he will deliver it to the table captain. 
He will then place the chip trays in the center of the table for collection by the second supervisor who is verifying this procedure behind him. Or if it is a smaller event, he might take those chips directly with him. However, before he leaves, he will then look to get the other 5,000 chip into the game by looking for a player with a large amount of 100 value chips, as they will be the next denomination to be removed in the next color up. If there are no 100 chips, it will be the 500 chips, and so on. Assuming we can make the exchange with someone, he will go ahead and count off 5,000 in various denomination chips, starting with the hundreds. And he will exchange them for the other 5k chip as previously described. Once this process is complete, the dealer may continue setting up the decks and cleaning up the surrounding area. If your event is using two supervisors for this process, the second one will not be far behind, but do not move the racks of green chips away from the center of the table. Even if they are in your way, you must simply work around this obstacle until the second supervisor comes to collect the chips. Remember, when handing a chip to the supervisor, that you must place it on the table so he can collect it. Do not try to pass the chip directly to his hand. A very important thing to remember during this process, there should be no dealer push until the chips have been exchanged, verified and collected. If you are a dealer waiting at the side ready to push into a table, even if the time to push has elapsed, do not push. Wait until the colour up process is complete. Once all tables have been verified, your supervisor will advise you to push into your designated table. If, after the colour up break is over, a player returns to the table and discovers an odd 25 value chip, be sure to call your floor supervisor. You can advise the player, when he asks you what is going to happen to it, that it will simply be removed from the game. We cannot allow for odd chips found after the colour up process to be exchanged for a greater value chip, or we would be faced with players deliberately hiding chips so they can guarantee for themselves a replacement chip of the greater value. This would simply be unfair to other players and corrupt the whole process. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and that it's been useful to you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find more videos just like this one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them on our YouTube channel or visit us at westcoastdealingschool.com. Our goal is to make poker games more fun and easier to play and deal.